and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. That feels very relevant to my journey on this table. You start off in one direction, make some compromises to get it to work, find that you've slowly detoured your way over to the point of being back somewhere where you started, and then you wonder why you left in the first place. Some of the things that I designed on here worked pretty well, like having these extrusions, providing structure, and the rail for the carts on top. The carts also work pretty well, the expansion arms. But some of the things like the vertical lift here have worked less well. I've thought about this vertical lift a ridiculous amount. I think part of the purpose of this video is just to justify that time investment to myself. Let's talk about some of the reasons why I have found this tricky, some of the options I've considered, and then the direction that I've settled on to move forward. The first thing that makes it difficult is simply the geometry of the table. I'm optimizing heavily for thickness because it adds to the utility and I think it also really adds to the wow factor. A normal table is five inches thick, and so if you see this one, which is also five inches thick when it's closed, and suddenly it can rotate and expand and do all of these other things, it's just amazing because it looks like the normal table. But doing that, of course, reduces the amount of space that's available to make all of these things happen. In this case, I pushed the mechanicals towards the center which is helpful because you don't care as much about the height when it's in the center, but you then have a leverage problem. These ramps, for example, are roughly 10 inches diameter, and the table's 60 on the panels when it's in the large case, and so you have leverage there. Any small deviations here in the height are multiplied as you get out towards the edge. And there's also material flex to consider as well. The second thing here is tolerance. My nominal gap between the panels is 130 thousandths, which means that Ideally, you'd want significantly less than that variation just to allow for extreme conditions. Let's go with a quarter. That gives us about 30 thousandths that we want to stay within. 30 thousandths over 30 inches is 0.1%. So basically, we're aiming for 99.9% .9 accuracy on this, and four times that would be out of our band. So 99.5% is, is a fail condition. The third thing is synchronization. Being in the right position doesn't matter if you're in that position at the wrong time. And the fourth is cost and accessibility. You cannot just buy your way out of a situation here by saying we're going to get ultra precision such and such or use some exotic materials. That's not going to work. I need to be able to build it here in my garage, which is fairly well equipped for a garage but is not nothing exotic, clearly. And if other people want to build it, they're going to have to build it in a similar workshop too. So what are some of the options that I considered? Well, the first one you're already quite familiar with. We have a fixed main hub and then a lifting hub, which is meshed within it. You ride up the ramps and the whole thing lifts. Now I would call this a global lifting strategy because the rails go up and they're all interconnected. And there's really only two pieces here, that main hub and then the lifting one. So it's quite simple in that respect. You could also have a local lifting strategy where all of the rails are fixed and there's something on the cart that goes up. So they're, they're independent mechanisms, but they hopefully happen all at the same time. Another option is to move these ramps out here, but the problem is that they would move with it. So you would need some sort of cable or other mechanism to make them move relative to the arms so that it would lift or you could have that support level come out here and have the ramps further out, but then that increases the thickness. Another option is to have a ramp out here so that as the cart expands, it will ride up that and push the panel up. The problem with this is that it has to stay up when it goes over center and comes back in. It cannot just ride back down the ramp. Figuring out how to do that is tricky to me. The obvious choice would be something like a click in, click out mechanism. But the problem with that is that what if you partially uh, make it to center and then go back without completely expanding? Some of them might be stuck in a different state than others. That would be a problem and hard to troubleshoot for the average user. The other thing you could do is to look at what's different from the cart's perspective, because all of this is moving, so we just have to zoom in on that cart. And from the cart's perspective, the only thing that's different is the angle of that expansion arm. Instead of being here, it's here, it's over center. So you could have some sort of linkage that comes over and blocks it from dropping back down. But that's tricky because this angular sweep, especially during that lifting portion, is really not that fast. So you'd have to lever it up and it gets complicated. The other thing is that even with a steeper ramp, 
this has to travel a decent distance in order to, to rise up, and that's burning your expansion distance, which is very, very precious. You don't want to waste that. Another option is some sort of parallelogram lift. It seems nice because it's guaranteed to be level here, but the problem is that it changes the expansion rate. It suddenly jumps outwards, especially as it's lifting. You also have all of these different linkages with their own slop, and it's, it's just a lot of parts to make. Another option are cables. They come in all kinds of sizes. They're good enough for aircraft. Why shouldn't they be good enough for this? Well, I worked for several years on laparoscopic surgical tools with cables significantly smaller than this, and I can tell you that creep is real and tension is everything on cables. What if the parallelogram was down here instead and this part was mounted to it so that it would go like that? Your distance sweep here wouldn't be too much. You could probably live with that. And the card, of course, has its position controlled by the arm, so it should be independent. We could also stay focused in the center, but do it with tolerance this time. Use real CNC type rails. You could use shafts like this with these type of linear bearings. Or you could go with bushings. These ones happen to be oilite style bushings, but you can also get plastic ones. What about some kind of gas strut? Not only does it translate in a straight direction, but it will assist with the lifting as well. And you can cut the ends off to have just the translation if you want. Or you could change the rules. Instead of having a hard stop just in the lower condition, you could have one in the upper condition as well, so that it wobbles a little bit in between, but you know where it is at the bottom, and you know where it is at the top. Or we could really lean into linkages. If this one was attached to the lifting arm and this one was fixed over here, this could rotate and constrain the lifting motion. There would be a little bit of horizontal sweep, but it's quite minor for even modest lengths of the lever. You could also mount these links in different orientations, for example, fixing this one out here and attaching this to the lifting arm so that it sweeps like that. You could put them at an angle. If we get clever with the linkages, you can create true linear motion, but that requires quite a few links and also it starts to feel a little too clever for what we're doing here. So at this point, I'm kind of stuck. Everything has pros and cons. I don't want to give up my table thickness, but I need it to perform better than it is right now. I find aviation to be absolutely fascinating on multiple levels, from the way that the people work and the machines work and dealing with weather and all the variables out there in the real world. And one thing that they use are called torque tubes. And they use them in the wing, for example, to control the different flight surfaces along the, the length of the wing. And I thought that was pretty interesting. The idea here is to have a shaft or a tube which is gonna transmit the torque. And on this end, I can put in some rotation and it comes out on the other end. These are interesting because you can key these differently. For example, this one's over here and this one's here. You can also have different lengths on them to have different amounts of leverage. Uh, you can put slots on it so that you can adjust it just a little bit. You can clamp to the shaft with pinch clamps, which are easy to make with laser cut. And My thought process is to keep the ramps inboard or fairly inboard, but have the application of that ramp be out here at the exterior, thus getting the benefit of having more of the mechanism towards the center, but also the benefit of having that lifting out at the edge. And with our fairly stiff torque tube, not having the, the leverage uh, disadvantage of an, any issues here in the center. So we need to make a model of this, super quick and dirty to test it, but models are not really an aviation thing. They would call it a subscale demonstrator. So let's build one. That's encouraging, but before I commit to all those extra parts, what if I simplify and just put the ramps midway out and constrain the rotation with links? It's not great, but before I give up, let's try with better ramps.
that was not very compelling. Let's use the same setup to test suspending the skirt from links instead of using ramps. This would be much easier to construct, although I'm not super hopeful about it. I was hoping you could rotate that link to 45 degrees or maybe slightly more and thus get some decent lift out of it, but it looks like 30 is maybe the, the maximum, and even then I'm sort of helping it out to get the vertical, so this one has no legs. I present to you a vision of the future. This is one part of our rotating mechanism, our cart that goes back and forth, the end that goes up and down, and our torque tube here with the cam that will ride on the ramp in the front and the lifting cam in the back. I don't have the ramp here because the geometry got a little funky on the demo, so don't worry about it. First it's going to expand out, and then as we rotate, we're going to catch our ramp and lift. The weight of the panel is a little over three pounds, so I have three and some change here to kind of a, simulate some jamming potentially. I like what I'm seeing with the torque tube demo. It's smooth, it's reliable, the system is rigid, it gives me a good feeling. So let's think about some of the other benefits. Now all of these tracks can be fixed, and that then opens up the possibility of changing out this trailer spindle, and in fact going with a DIY spindle. When I'm routing those plywood circles, it makes me think about how consistent they are. It's very smooth and it's pretty easy, and you can build them in various sizes to scale for larger tables if needed. These spindles even a much heavier one doesn't have a much larger diameter here, and so you're kind of constrained. Whereas a DIY one, you can make it to suit your own purposes. It also helps us out with mounting this drive plate. This has a D-shaft in the center, but there's still wiggle, and this is a problem when you're trying to control everything very nicely. So you basically end up relying on torquing this down a lot, and that creates a lot of preload on the taper bearings, which you can feel. You could possibly go to a jam nut setup in here, but you, you just start running out of room. So the next step here is for me to take what I've learned, spend some time in CAD, work out the proportions and dimensions of the next prototype, and figure out what we want to build. Basically, it's going to have fixed tracks, a DIY slewing ring, and torque tubes that come out and engage when that cart is in the outer position. Thank you for watching.